You got my audio? Got my audio. Hello. Hey, guys. I'm going to put my Cape York shirt on because we're in Cape York. I bought this six years ago from the Croc tent. Pretty bloody clean, isn't it? Oof. And we're going to need a hat. <sighs> All right. Come around here. Let's go to the front. So I thought I'd make this video because we are doing Cape York at the moment, which is a remote trip. And some people might be interested in how you pack or how I pack for a bigger trip because this has always been used for just beach stuff. What we got, DI. I live in Queensland now. Honestly, there's nowhere remote. From WA, you could really hit the road and go to like Karajini, bit of like a week trip. But to get anywhere remote, you pretty much need to go to Cape York or Arnhem Land. So it's kind of rare for Queensland. So I'll run you through the setup. You've seen the car, this is the Duramax. We've done a few corrugated roads, nothing too hectic yet. The tally track's happening tomorrow. So if you wanna watch that, I'll link it down below. 6.6 .6 litre Duramax. Not really gonna be looking too much into that. What we're gonna be looking at is sort of how I've packed and how I've set up. Before we even go to the back, these are a must, I think. A little filtered sock for your snorkel with a bit of uh, oil on it. And that's acts as a, like look how much dust that's got already, which would be going into your airbox. Just a little side note. So that's one thing that I would do that's different to a normal trip. Tick that box. Inside, pretty basic. You wanna minimize what you got in here because when you do like stuff like a Metelli track, there's a lot of up and downs. You don't want shit falling off the dash, stuff flying from under your feet that can get under the brake pedal, whatnot. A lot of this will get moved tomorrow, but oh, oh just grab this. Right, camera wise, GoPro in the middle, simple, and then we use the handheld as a bit of an in car. I have a handheld GME radio, which is for like your spotter, so the person that jumps out and talks. We've got our in-car XRS. Um, and I thought I'd mention this as well. This is like the personal locating beacon from GME. So that's sort of a safety thing. They can call, what is it called? Just choppers, helicopters. Yeah, my cameraman's actually a paramedic for his day job. So he can tell you all about that one. Um, other than that, pretty simple inside. So camp wise, you've all seen the build of the canopy. I mean, I use my upright fridge for all the day to day stuff. Food, you don't want to overpack. A must for something like Cape York, if you've got a little uh, freezer section, go the ice blocks. When it's bloody 40 degrees and you're sweating your whole off, sucking on one of them will save your life. All right, under here, knives and forks just sitting there. This is sort of the pantry. Um, so I, I basically, like, there's two ways you can do it. What we're doing, when you've got a group of people, we cook a group meal, so you only have to cook a couple of times. So we're like, We'll cook a meal for like six people, then the next night someone else cooks for everyone, the next night someone else cooks for everyone, that works great and that's what we're doing. Another way I like to do it is if you're doing a long trip, you can actually vac seal or just use Ziploc bags of pre-made meals like spaghetti bolognese or like pasta bake or chicken lux or whatever you want to make and then you freeze it, you throw it in a freezer. So you have another fridge, dedicated freezer, freeze about five or six meals, normally in a big Ziploc bag you can feed two people and that'll last you like probably most of the trips, that's another way to do it. But We've got our main meals that we're doing for the communal stuff, but then I always keep with me just some really long life food, like your pastas. I've got some migorina stuff in there. Stuff that won't go off. This shit you can whip up, which isn't necessarily like um, allocated for a meal, but it's just like spare food in case you have a drama and get stuck on the track for a while. So pretty simple in there, that's all your food. This is my little pantry, pots and pans. Um, nothing really changes in here. Like we've got some toilet paper, because obviously you're out in the bush. Um, and also I've got a jet boil to boil some water, which I probably wouldn't normally have on like a small trip. But other than that, it's all the usual stuff. We've got the cooker in there as well, just a gas cooker. Thinking about going to um, induction, but haven't quite been sold on that yet. Um, two spares on the back, a bin bag. That's probably stuff I'd normally have on a trip anyway. Uh, we'll look at in the back here. We'll have a quick look at all these doors. This is my main toolkit I have with me. It's got everything you want in there, so all your sockets, even deep sockets. Um, I have a puncher repair kit, that's something extra that I take. Just if you get a puncher, like you have your spares, but if you can just plug it in if you do run out of spares, it's always a good lifesaver. An axe, have someone in the group with a chainsaw. I've put a um, recovery strap in here, and I've also got one in a side door, so depending on where you get stuck, it's easier to access the back drawer, or sometimes it might be easier to access the side if you've backed up to something. Um, we'll quickly go back and have a look in here. I, don't, I can't remember what I've put in these ones. All right, people of New South Wales, pay attention because this weekend, Show Your Dirt Sydney is back 
Uh, we're gonna be down at Eastern Creek from 5 p.m. Now, this Show Your Dirt event is a show and shine event for you to bring your four-wheel drive down and put it on display. There'll be a ton of prizes, um, a heap of categories where you can win trophies and prizes. We're raising money for charity as well with a raffle. Um, so come down, there'll be live music, food and drink, um, scrub those bull bars and get yourself down to the show. Now, next weekend at the same venue at Eastern Creek uh, Dragway will be the four drive adventure show. So I'm gonna be there with all the budget build crew, the Delica will be there, the GU and the 80 series and also the giveaway wagon. Now, if you wanna get tickets to that event, um, use code BNB, I'll put a link down below so you can get yourself some tickets for the show to reserve your spot. Um, now, talking about the GU, we're actually gonna be giving away that car live at the show at 1 p.m. on the Saturday. So if you want to get your last minute entries in, I'll put a link down below for that as well. Um, entries close for that uh, GU giveaway on the 4th, so this weekend. So you need to make sure you get in for that um, and then come down to the show to see it live. Now, if you can't make it to the four-wheel drive show, I will be running an Instagram live on the Saturday 10th at 1 p.m. to draw the winner. Keep your phones near you because I'll be calling the winner live there to uh, congratulate the person for winning that car. Uh, I think that's everything. Show your dirt this weekend, Sydney show after that, and get your last minute entries in. We'll see you there. Oh yeah, this was my sort of, didn't really need anything in this one. I've just put some rags, some sand pegs, and then a bit of rubber that I bought to do some repairs the other day. Kind of, this is sort of the spare box that I don't necessarily keep anything important in there. This one has my uh, air system. I haven't finished it actually, but this has got to be mounted as my air outlet. It also controls the airbags. Jump starter, I have a four ton bottle jack, and this is um, everything I use to pump up tires, and I've also got a little uh, ratchet strap in there as well. So that's that side. What else we got? Max tracks on the roof. I always have them with me if the canopy's on, obviously. This side is where we just chuck everything. So this will be like camp chairs, bags with clothes, whatnot. Always have a fire extinguisher with you. I got one in the cab and one in the canopy. Um, Gas bottle, fan, all sorts of bits and pieces. This is cool, so I found, managed to finally find a table that fits perfectly in that little slot I built. And next to it, I have like a mini table for like, it sits down low by your chair sort of thing for your drinks. This is the missus drawer, really good tip. If you're taking your partner with it, give her a space that has a limit, right? If you give her a drawer that says, this is all you can have, then hopefully they'll stick kind of in it and don't put crap everywhere else. Ah, oh, see, got my stuff in here, not hers. It's amazing. This is, okay, so I'm obviously filming, but this is a front section is camera gear, which I've just cut some foam out. Keep everything protected, not too bad. And then spare parts, you kind of be blown away. Most of my spare parts are actually in the back half of this drawer. You think you take up a heap of room, but. Is that a funny joke? What, what happened? What? You just start laughing. <laughs> anyway, I've got a starter motor. If you've got an automatic, starter motor is a must. Alternator is a must for everyone. I've got that under my seat because it didn't quite fit in the height of this drawer. Then I got uni joints, wheel bearings, front and rear, a set of studs for the front and rear, um, filters, electrical cable, fuses, any individual bits and pieces that. Pretty much the thing is get all those general parts and then if your car has ever broken something that's a little oddball in the past, bring one with you. Like for me, I've got a trans cooler under there and I've stuck a hole through it before, so I bought a T-piece to basically bypass that cooler if I do get a hole in it. So if your car has broke, broken down before and it's a bit of an odd thing, just prepare for that again. Um, and then this is just my, whoa, got to fit nicely. This one's actually just the beer fridge this trip, which will get turned off if we kind of run out of beer. This is like the backup butch. Would be a freezer if it was any other trip, but we managed to get enough food without it being a freezer. Um, what you can't see in the back behind, I've got a speaker there. There's two, I think they're five litre oil. Oh, you can't really see them. I've got a tarp in there. I've got oil uh, for the transmission, full bottles, just because I'm freaking out about losing gearbox. Oh, it's a game show, a game changer, was it? Showstopper, that's the word. And I managed, this is what I probably wouldn't normally do, but for this trip, I've got most of my lubricants up in here, nice and forward, nice and low center of gravity. Got some brake cleaner, some actual brake fluid. We've got greases. Um, so this is the all purpose grease. And then we've got some contact cleaner because you can always have electrical issues, especially going in water. You want to think about the trip you're going on. Is it going to be water? Is it going to be dust? Is it going to be snow? A little top up oil. Also got some easy squeezes. This is for like diffs and stuff. Um, power steering fluid is another one which can be used as transmission fluid as well if you need. And then I've got Diff oil, I did, just because I had the room, I bought a bigger one because 
if you do something dramatic and put a hole in your diff, you probably lose all of your fluid. So between a big bottle like that and all your mates on the trip, you could probably get it topped up again. So that's all of the spare parts in there. And other than that, I didn't bring an extra solar blanket because we're doing a lot of driving every day. You want to think about that. You want to think about what you don't need and what takes up a lot of weight and room. Like a solar blanket that folds out literally weighs like 20 kilos, 20, 30 kilos, depending on how big it is. And because we're driving every single day, it's just not needed. Whereas if I was going out somewhere and parking up for three days, then I'd take a solar blanket. So you really want to kind of tailor it for the trip that you're doing. All right, water wise, we've actually got this peak or tray has a 70 litre waters on board. I use that for cooking, cleaning and shower. So there's a little tap at the back here, which has a running water from that tank. Um, I do have a shower tent. I think that's, yeah, kick ass little um, ensuite thing they call it and just a shower hose and it works perfectly. I can just bust that out and hook it on with a nice machined hook. Where'd you get that from, Michael? Uh, Darchi. Came with the Darchi kit. Yeah. But yeah, this thing's been mint. Anyway, um, so that's for a shower, which you don't have every night, every couple of nights, whatnot. But water-wise for drinking, I always like to go for these 600 ml bottles and instead of one of these, we've got both because we have both. But anyway, the reason why, you do have an accident on the road, your water can, um, be damaged and you'll lose it all if it's a bag like that. If you've got a whole lot of 600 ml bottles with the same capacity and you have an accident, you may lose half your water, but at least the bottles will keep it contained. So that's like obviously vital to stay alive. So always prefer individual bottles over a massive 20 liter drum of water for your drinking. So that's pretty important one. Last thing is just in the front here where I am. I have a quick, quick, easy access first aid kit, just a little one. Um, that's just for my wheel nuts under there and what else was going to show up here? It was something. If you have a group of people, take one of the big things. One massive iron pot for cooking on the fire, one chainsaw, like one axe maybe. What else is big and annoying? Cracker bucket? Yeah, one shitter. We yeah. made one. Yeah, check this out. Yeah, one chainsaw. That works. Couple of Jerry's. We've actually got more petrol. Actually, it's two petrols and two diesels. So like, if you so obviously a lot of uh, these days, you want to have your self-contained toilets, which is a good thing, but a lot of places you can still get away with an old bucket like this. We just got a crate, put a toilet seat on there, dig a hole, take a shovel, good to go. You throw that on the roof. It always sticks outside the car. Anyway, that is a little quick tip, check, walk around, whatever of the uh, Cape York trip adventure. Good, happy? If you've got a Challenger, you probably fit none of that. <laughs> Tell you one thing, it'd, it'd be a challenge. <laughs> Hello guys and welcome to Built Not Bought HQ. Make sure to click on the far left to subscribe to the channel. Click down below to see the latest episode if you missed it. And don't forget our merchandise on our website. See you in the next episode.